Hi, flower lovers. We are back. Um, today, I'm really excited about this topic that we're going to tackle. It is going to be, we're going to share our stories about making flower essences. And this is such a funny topic because we, everyone that I've ever talked to who makes flower essences has an assortment of wild and crazy things that have happened to them as they were making essences. And whenever you're in this magical liminal state, working with the intelligence of nature, very interesting things happen. And I'm really excited to share my stories. And I, I know, Rokana, you have some stories ready to go. And we're going to dive in uh, in just a minute. We wanted to share a new piece um, of the show where we are highlighting a, a beloved friend of ours um, who will be sponsoring this episode. Yeah, this is exciting. A uh, new new development for us, and we are having uh, Ruth Toledo Alt Schuler from EssenceCircles.com sponsor this episode, and she has a unique community of um, essence circles that she facilitates that deep dive into flower essences and flower essence therapy. Specifically, she's offering these deepening circles, which is an in-depth study program for both professional practitioners and dedicated students to further our relationship with the plants, the essences, and each other. Now, Ruth has been a mentor to both of us, and studying with her is a unique experience that we both really deeply value. We're both enrolled in the Deepening Circles class, and we absolutely love the quality and the depth of her program. So get ready for inspiration and meeting the flowers on a whole new level and find out more about Ruth and this offering at EssenceCircles.com. We'll put a link in the show notes. So the first part about making an essence is I, I know that this is really important to me and I know it's important to you as well, Ro, this quality of connection, this quality of relationship. It's, we, we live in such a commercial culture and we tend to have a colonial attitude that's just, it's just part of what, how we're built, where we just think we can just go and buy something or we can just go and get something. If it's just sitting there, we can take it. And nothing could be further from the truth when we're working with nature, we're working with the intelligences of nature. We have to join in a sacred, sacred relationship with the plants that we are interested in working with. And I don't know about you, but I've been interested in certain plants for years sometimes before I get a yes that they want that, you know, the timing is right and that they're ready to work with me making an essence. So the, you know, it is part of a lot of essence um, trainings where you learn how to make flower essences. But I would certainly say, if you don't get, if you're, if you're asking and you're not getting a no on a regular basis, you may not be really asking <laughs> with the true openness to, to receiving a, a true yes. Um, I think consent goes uh, all over throughout all species <laughs> and throughout all kingdoms. Uh, this is something that's really important to me. Um, and I think that, that you too, um, have a, have a very similar perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And even more so coming from the herbal world where foraging is sort of, you know, a hot new trend. Um, it's very Instagrammable and bloggable and people post a lot of pictures about going and collecting plants for, for medicine. And, you know, this is, it, it, it's certainly, there's certainly a romance to that. And we're all, gosh, so attracted to doing that. It's, I think, deep in our, in our soul and our hearts and our bones going back to, you know, just our DNA of how we as humans have evolved with the, the plant community and the environment on, here on this earth. However, um, it's not that, it's not that simple. And there is, harm that can be done, not just to the plant, but to the whole and you know, the whole ecosystem um, at, as well. So things like foraging take not just learning how to identify plants or even not just how to take a certain percent of the plants to, you know, there's just 
so much more nuance to it and so much more study. So um, the good thing about flower essences is they are the least amount of impact to the um, to the plants and the flowers because we're not we're not taking the whole plant. We're just taking a, a, a flower or a couple flowers. Um, but there's still there's still considerations. Is it a rare plant? And all of those sort of logical things that you want to think about. But on top of that, there's also the nonlinear permission that Kathleen you're talking about, which is, is this the right time energetically to make a flower essence? And you know, what what is that all about? So there is definitely building that relationship with the environment, with the plant on those levels that I talked about. And then also on that energetic level, because it needs to be sort of like a two-way communication for, you know, we're not just asking to take the plant, we're also communicating the whole time we're making the essence and sort of hearing or channeling its messages to us. And so we have to make sure that, that it's the right time to do that. Mm -hmm. And also because we're, like you're saying, we're not just working on the the physical principle of the leaves or the, you know, the roots or what have you, we are working, we have to be working in full co-creation with the plant, with the spirit of the plant, the deva of the plant. So it has even a higher bar to, to creation because it's not that you've decided to do this thing and you're taking like the body of the plant. You need the spirit of the plant to be fully on board with what's happening on that, in that moment, in that moment of essence making. So it's, I think, and I don't know if this has been your experience also, but there's this moment that happens. There's this special time and you can't schedule it and you can't decide, you know, this is the day, week, month, or year that I'm going to be doing this thing. There's, you're entering in this, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's so non-linear. It's so non, you know, normal reality. Uh, and so you're looking for that when you know that it's, when you know that you've been working with a plant and you've been wanting to make an essence perhaps, or you've been struggling with an issue and you, you're looking for a plant partner to help you with that issue, something special will happen. They'll step forward for you in a way that's not a normal, <laughs> not a normal reality kind of way. I think that when I am, when you're in the essence state, and this is something that, that Jane Bell, my primary teacher shared is you're not in normal reality anymore. And it can start days before you make the essence. It can start when you have a plan to go somewhere and you might be making an essence, who knows, but things will start to happen that will trigger your, hopefully will trigger your awareness and realize, oh, this is part of the remedy. This is part of what's happening. And they're not just like, you, you have to be watching for the synchronicities and for the, the odd little events or funny things that happen or things that show up in your awareness or in your car. <laughs> <laughs> or in your in your bowl, um, you know, different different experiences will happen on the way, or be even before you get the bowl out. Let's say, yeah, absolutely. And I think a big big part of it is is learning to. I mean, it's it's a practice. It's it's just a a lifestyle even that is about paying attention to the signs, kind of, and list. You know. Um, so it's not just, as you say, about when you start making the essence, um, it's that thought. It's like you've maybe been visiting that plant for a while, or you've walked past it, or it's in your garden. And, you know, for me, it's, you know, I'm watching these plants and, and monitoring them like every day, you know, for years, um, seeing how they grow, just, you know, it's this curiosity of their personality of how they are in their environment. And when you do that, all of a sudden there's a time when they start to flower where the whole plant just seems to like glow. Mm -hmm. And that glow, uh, maybe some of that is, is, you know, on a different plane, but when I see that, it, when it looks like to me, but maybe it doesn't show up for other people, but because I'm in that sort of relationship, there is a glow that it has. And 
and that's how when I know that it's it's like ready for for making an essence that's intriguing it, I, I like that you brought that up because that's a little different than my experience I will often feel called but my my intuitive skills are not usually very visual so it's really cool to hear how your your talent um, for that intuitive quality has more of a visual tone to it because mine is more like the clairsentience or clairaudience where I'll, I'll hear things or I'll feel things really strongly. Um, so, and I think that's another really great note because not everybody's experience in making essence is going to be the same. You know, some people get you know, a visitation and they get this whole download and, and not everybody gets that. Uh, you, when you're making an essence, you're looking for all the different possibilities and different, I've, at least my experience, different essences feel different. I get different information. Some are more chatty. Some don't tell me a thing. Some have a, I have this huge physical experience, some all sorts of weird synchronicities. You know, it, it, it can be anything. So when you're getting interested in this, think about the possibilities that you could be getting information in ways that are not the obvious way, let's say. Yeah, I, I would say the, like everything you just said is exactly my experience too. It's so different between the plants and the glow isn't necessarily a huge visual thing. It's more like it's calling to me and I'm, and I, and it's a combination of it's catching my attention. And then I look at it and I notice the light glinting off of it in a certain way or something like that. And it just, it's somehow it's calling out to me and it maybe it's, it's so hard to articulate, but maybe it's a combination of the visual, even though normally I don't have visual as part of my sensitivity that much. It's more like you say, um, the knowing and the, the, um, the downloads, you know, once I start working with them. So yeah, it would be different for everybody, I'm sure, depending on where your, your um, extrasensory capabilities are. Mm -hmm. and, and also with the different plants too, because they're, yeah. they, they, they communicate with different, um, different skills. What my experience with working with some of these really ancient plants like the magnolias, you know, the, the family is a hundred million years old and they're not as wordy necessarily as some of the younger plants that have, you know, more experience. So, so bringing those, that information through as an essence, it can sometimes be more kind of meta information rather than in a plant. That's some of the plants that have been used as herbs, I find tend to be a little kind of chattier they're more they're more sort of human scale they understand like oh yeah i get how these humans work and i know how to talk yeah. to them <laughs> that's that's my experience too the herbs are so much more like i guess approachable might be i don't know if that's quite the right word but they know how to work with humans and so i think they have an easier time um uh communicating with us <laughs> It's, and, and that's something that that's been my experience, but I've never heard anybody talk about it before. So it's really hoot to hear that you've had that same experience because <laughs> I, and I guess that would get into one of the, one of the things that is something that's been my experience making essences. And I've certainly seen uh, some people talking about making essences and it's all, you know, you know, wonderful, expansive and light and, and like all the good side, you know, all the sort of the positive manifestations of an essence. And a lot of times when I'm making essences or in that essence experience, and I'm going to embrace the full scope of nature that's going on around me all the time. The weather right now is so springy and I have, I think I have a nesting set of birds in every single eve outside my window and my birds are just chattering at the birds outside. <laughs> There's a lot of nature sound in this. It, it's part of the soundscape we're creating for you podcast listeners. So <laughs> I'll apologize and pretend that it's intentional. Um, <laughs> so the, the experience of making essences is for me, not all sweetness and light. Um, I oftentimes will really experience the, I don't, even shadow side is too weird. It's, it's almost just like you get both polarities of the essence when you're making it. And I appreciate it, even though it's not fun. Um, I appreciate it because then it helps me recognize 
who this can help. And when I have a client come to me and, and express this state, I'm like, oh, I know the plant for you. <laughs> Is that something that you've experienced also? Yeah, absolutely. So it's funny, you know, I have, well, I have all these journals and, and, and these are all, you know, I'm look, pointing out on the video. I mean, these and a few more are basically um, all the writings from all the plants I've sat with, I don't know, around 200 at this point, I have totally lost count. And um, many of those journal entries <laughs> start out with, oh my God, I've got a headache. I feel like crap today. How am I going to do this and sit here for two hours and make this essence? And like, I don't even know if I could do it <laughs> because something or other is happening. And mm -hmm. part of it is really sitting with that, like sitting with the observe, getting into observer mind about the experience instead of that identification mind. And just kind of going, oh, that's interesting. And I write through it. I write through those feelings. I write them down. And then when I kind of, it's like almost like if you've ever heard of that practice, um, the um, artist way, where that is a practice of writing like uh, daily a pages, number of daily pages before ever trying to write anything creative, because you just have to get out all the gunk out of your, you know, your brain and your psyche. And I feel like the beginning pages of my essence um, journaling is that it's like exactly that it's like, I'm going to get out all the things that are, you know, bugging me that are in my mind and just like clear myself of that. But in that process, I observe what is happening, because that's a clue. Everything is part of you know, the experience. And then when you look at that later, after getting even more information, that's more direct from the plant, it's really interesting to correlate and see, oh, that's interesting because that makes sense. I was feeling that way. And this plant is saying, hey, it can help for people feeling that way. And that's part of the stories around Dr. Bach learning about the essences and making the first modern series of essences was the the legend i don't know it, it's not in his own hand but it's the stories that have been passed down that he experienced the like the worst state you know he would experience the 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 negative polarity of the essence and he would go out for a walk and he would look for a plant that would make him feel better that would meet that in him so i'm i'm familiar with this scenario also um you know there have been times where i was on the way to the garden and and feeling like <laughs> all sorts of funky feelings and i'm like okay well there's an essence happening today <laughs> i don't know what it is yet but i'm on my way and um you know for one the sweet chestnut and i made a a cult, uh, species of sweet chestnut that's not the same one as Dr. Bach made it. This one is one that originates from Japan. And the experience of making the essence of like just trudging up the hill and like, oh God, I feel so depressed. I just can't even like, oh, and I'm, and you know, half of me is doing that. And the other half of me is watching me do that going, yeah, this is part of the story. <laughs> and then just walking up to the plant and seeing it, I'm like, oh, obviously sweet chestnut, <laughs> you know, where you get that pull, you get this magnetic pull into the direction of the plant. And then even the whole time of making the essence was just this dark, uh, you know, end of my rope kind of scenario. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm sitting on this little ledge looking down onto where the tree is growing and I have the bowl in front of me and I'm looking down going, Oh, it's just a 10 foot drop. I'd only just break my leg, not end this all, you know? <laughs> and it was, it was really intense, but you know, I was also recognizing, okay, this is, this is the, this is the essence. This is what it's talking about. Um, so, you know, going through essence making process is not all like <laughs> sweetness and light, but I did really recognize when I finished the process with that essence and I could feel that release. I felt that softening and opening and like, Oh, this is the way through it's to it's to relax and open the grip open the hands and allow that intensity to flow through and that was that's really the message of sweet chestnut mm -hmm. in dark moments just okay well, here we are and let's let it flow yeah it it, it, it also it's kind of an exhausting <laughs> process to make essences so even when it's not an experience like that 
I find that I can only do a certain number, you know, a week, or I'm just, you know, kind of a basket case from the real and like really intense, even though at the time of essence making it right afterwards, I usually feel pretty good, mm -hmm. but it, uh, it can be hard to integrate back into regular life, um, or bounce back and forth between doing essences and doing something like, you know, more linear. So it, it, it definitely is, um, something that you have to kind of make your lifestyle work around. You can't schedule essences into your life. You have to schedule your life around the essences. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and, and it is very, it takes a lot out of you, even though you're like, all I did today was I sat with a bowl, like what is wrong with me? But you're so right. I have that same experience that it really, it's, it's like you did a marathon sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's work that I feel it's just so it's like my life's work, right? It's, it's my, my calling, what I feel called to do. And I, and I absolutely love it, but it can certainly be challenging <laughs> in so many ways because of that. Please tell me a story, like, like oh, a yeah. sweet one. Cause the, the stories I have are like the like crazy ones. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. So it's not just about what necessarily I'm feeling, um, but also what happens around me and, and, and that's a, that's, a, there's a lot of clues there. So depending on where you're making essences, then I make them in some of the wild places around the Northern California coast. And also in my forest yards, so I have property in a forest. Um, and I, a lot of times walk around the area, um, and there's so many beautiful forest flowers around here. And so one of the flowers that I made last year was Western heart disease, also called the two-eyed violet. And it's a beautiful little white um, violet that grows under, you know, in the redwood understory. And it's really just um, not far from my property up the street a little bit. And so I knew, you know, I, I walked by it every day for a couple of years, you know, make, and, and then, but when the time was right to make the essence, I, you know, got my supplies and I, kind of nestled myself in just off the the side of the the road and the roads here there's like one car a day so it's you know it's not very busy um and i you know i was starting to to write in my journal and connect with the plant and then here comes um this elderly couple that owns the the property in between where i was and and my property so sort of my neighbors but they they came to do a bunch of brush clearing that day and so they're in their you know their pickup truck and they're you know, parking and then they're starting to to clear all of this invasive french broom off the property and you know uh, one uh, the the wife came and like really like 10 feet away from me. And I was just kind of like not making any movements because I didn't want to scare her or surprise her. <laughs> and and um, and no, nobody ever saw me. So I just kind of stayed there and tried to keep concentrating with the flower. But it was very hard to do that because here they are, this elderly couple who the husband is a Vietnam vet. They've been together forever. And they have that old couple way of, squabbling, you know, like fighting, you know, like, you know, nipping at each other for everything. So they're up on this hill trying to clear a brush and they're kind of arguing to, to the, to the past, to the, you know, to, to anyone just passing by, they would think it was a couple arguing. As I'm sitting there though, I'm feeling really like protected from that argumentative energy. And I'm feeling it coming from the heart sees. It's kind of got this this little buffer happening. And I'm so I'm just observing that that feeling because a lot of times when somebody's arguing, you know, I get a reaction to it. I have a hard time being around that or without doing some sort of energy work to, to buffer myself and my sensitivity about it. So um so I'm feeling that that buffering and I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of cool, you know, like this heart disease is probably, you know, that's probably about that. And but something really, really kind of wonderful and folded, you know, as I'm hearing the, the husband, you know, he's, he says, God damn a lot and swears and everything, but it's like cute in this old fashioned way. And 
his wife isn't really like over, like reacting to it. They're just doing their job. They're clearing the brush. They're like working as a team, as a partnership and really like getting it done. And I felt this sense of my heart just like softening for them, this like pure compassion. Also knowing that he was a Vietnam vet and he had told me previously on an interaction about his horrendous story over there and just knowing that they had been together for so long through this thick and thin of life. And I just felt my, I, just a real visceral, like heart opening, this reaction of just pure compassion for these people and that I hardly knew. And it was really sweet. So I, I felt, and I understood immediately this essence being for um, engendering compassion and then also not being pulled into other people's drama, right? So, uh, you know, I was able to observe it and have compassion without getting caught up in the drama. And that is such a key thing for people that are highly sensitive and empathic in nature. And I, I felt felt like that was a, you know, a perfect, um, perfect way to experience that, but it wasn't like, it was not coming as a download necessarily from the plant. It's like the plant was showing me. It was, it was literally, um, it was amazing that this experience seemed to be just so perfect in, in, its, in, its, in the way that it um, illustrated to me what this flower was about. And that, that personal, intimate, lived experience really does give you so much information on how you can use that remedy, how you can, uh, how that remedy is here to help people. It's here to help the world um, by, by recognizing the circumstances that, that evolve around its making. And the more that it gets used in the world, the more people who use that essence, the more you see the different facets and aspects um, of the meanings around it. Um, and it's, it's, and certainly when you have an experience where you have people that are, you know, wildly interacting around there, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, I've, I've certainly had experiences where, where, you know, sort of random people coming by either notice or don't notice me. Uh, certainly with the, um, one of the, one of the most distinct circumstances where that happened for me was with the purple sage, which is one of my uh, flora of Asia essences. And I just had this experience where all these people were coming towards me, but then they were just diverting, you know, and then they would like walk past and they wouldn't even notice me. And I can assure you, I was not wearing camouflage. <laughs> I was visible, but they never saw me. And sitting with this plant just gave me this experience of being so shielded. It has been um, an incredible asset ally <laughs> to me personally, as I, you know, reach out into the world in a, in a, in a broader way, like when we started doing this podcast and like, oh my God, people are hearing us and listening to us <laughs> and getting to know us a little bit. Uh, and, and it, there's a real concern, legitimate concern with sharing something so personal and sharing, letting yourself be seen. And this essence is so helpful with letting people who don't who shouldn't be seeing you not see you <laughs> and only letting people who are in alignment with you are on the same wavelength with you, see you and respond and, and connect with you. Because this is a, a very common challenge where sensitive people and, and heartful people are really concerned and legitimately so about attracting, you know, unwanted attention. So that, that purple sage was an important, um, has been an important ally for me and, and a lot of the people I work with. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many times I have been sitting on the side of a trail or, you know, somewhere um, that people have walked by and never seen me. It is, or riding a bicycle or driving. I mean, obviously when somebody's driving, they're looking at the road and that makes a little more sense, but it's kind of amazing how many people don't really look around when they're walking and they're not paying attention to what's on either side of them, maybe they're lost in their thoughts. Um, I just find it really fascinating, but I agree that there's something about being in that 
container of essence making that even makes it more so I, I you know I just, every time I can't believe somebody you know I kind of brace for it, what I'm going to say when they like say ask what are you doing <laughs> and then it doesn't happen it's so you're right because most of the time that is exactly the case although I have had a couple interesting experiences when I was working with more social remedies <laughs> where people will come by and they'll say hi and you'll chat for a little bit and it's all like it's cool. <laughs> it's really a sweet interaction where, like you say, most of the time I sit there and go like, don't notice me, don't notice me, don't notice me. <laughs> Cause I don't want to talk to you and I don't, you know, I don't want to have this, you know, I don't want to deal with it. And then the times where somebody has noticed me, it was like, oh, it was really right. And it was really almost a communal experience, even though they're not, they're not part of it. They're, they're expressing friendliness and, and, you know, a, a nice um, interaction. So that's, that's a really sweet thing that that happens sometimes with certain remedies um like yarrow for me has been that experience where it's it's more of like a um interacting with others kind of a kind of an essence and the the yellow hawthorn for sure uh, you know trusting people to be of good heart trusting people to want to be you know kind and 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 involved and not just like what are you doing <laughs> yeah yeah. And what about accidents? Have you had any, you know, strange, happy or unhappy accidents in the essence making process? Oh, that's a good question. I hadn't really thought about it. You tell me if you have a story, tell me your story and I'll see if I can pull one up out of the, out of the reservoir. Yeah. Well, it was, it, it, I guess for me, this um, working with this Calypso orchid that I started working with um a couple years ago and last year decided to make an essence and it's it's a it comes up out of the forest floor you can barely if you don't know what to look for you'll step right on the one leaf that comes up out of the like redwood you know uh leaves the detritus of the forest floor and then at the certain time of year it'll have this one flower and it's very low to the ground so it's really easy to miss um, so it's not a rare plant, but it's definitely not something that you, you know, would want to pick. Um, so last year I made a no pick essence because I didn't want to, to pick it. There was only a couple of them that I found in this, um, this area of the forest and I had a wonderful essence making session with it. I got this really heavy, you know, like download of information. And I, because it, you know, I wasn't, I don't know about you and how you make essences away from your, you know, the garden or the home and how you pack them back to, or, you know, and cover them or, you know, whatever. I, um, I like to, I have a, a covers that I put on the bowls and then I bring the bowl back home and then I finish my essence making process into the, you know, the mother essence bowl and filter it and all that. So, um, I guess I didn't put the cover on all the way and I had it in my pack. And by the time I even got to my car, it had completely spilled and saturated the backpack. So there, there was nothing left after a couple hours sitting with it and it was devastating, but I thought, okay, well, I guess it's just not the right time, even though I had, I didn't get the, I didn't get a no from it. Um, and I got good information. It just, I guess it wasn't the right time. So I'll, I'll try again next year. So that was actually just a month ago that I, I went and I tried it again. I, I, I keep an eye on this area of the forest. I walk by it regularly to, you know, I don't know, check up on it. it it's a really beautiful little, um, corner of a redwood forest. Unfortunately, or fortunately, there's a lot of fire remediation going on around here with, um, you know, living in this forest in California with all the threat of the fire and the fires we had last year, there's a really increased effort to, to clear, you know, flammable and do fire reme remediation and clear some of the trees, not the redwoods, of course, but the other one, the bays, and a whole contingent had been there. Um, and uh, I saw, I, you know, it was, it was brutal. I saw tire tracks on the one orchid that I had worked with the year before. And I, you know, I made, I, I kind of went to all this trouble and I made a, like a, a circle around it with sticks in case anyone came back to try to like highlight it. And I found some others, um, that were okay. And so I thought, okay, phew, okay. I can, I can, I can still work with this plant and thank goodness there's more, you know, nearby here that they didn't harm inadvertently 
And so I was going to do the no pick method again. However, one orchid had been harmed and it may have been from a branch falling because it was really interesting. It was just the stem was completely bent and damaged, but the flower was intact. And so I thought, wow, it's almost like giving itself here for the essence because it's just going to die in a, like a day, it's, it's staying the way it is. So I carefully cut it right at that bent um, stem and was able to make an essence with that in, in an area where there was essences. And this time the, build, the bowl didn't spill and I now have the Calypso orchid essence, but it was kind of like this unhappy accident from last year into this and there's more to it that's too long to go into about the essence the message of the essence um but it really all made so much sense to me and it felt like it wanted to be it wanted to be more physically part of that essence and um and, and it felt it felt it felt right it felt like the right thing to do so um you know that's really it for that for that <laughs> Yeah, working with nature is always you're you're always having to juggle because we get these agendas. We're like, but this is the way I want it to be. <laughs> I think this is how I'm supposed to do it, and you know, I I, I have this plan, um, and <laughs> it always is funny how how nature always has the last laugh on our plans. I, I know that I've had a little bit of an experience kind of maybe more on that rather than on the accident side. Um, but the, that quality of my thinking, what I'm going to be doing and then what actually ends up happening <laughs> being two very different things. Um, because, you know, you can be, you can be going and you, you know, thinking that this plant that I've been working with for the last few years and like waiting for it to come into bloom and be like, okay, I think this year is going to be the year that I get to be able to do this. And then I, you know, I would go to, I, I'm at the garden and I'm like looking at this plant and, you know, there's just chaos going on around and like, it's totally not, not, not possible to make an essence. And so keep walking on. And then I bump into um, the Artemisia and this whole message of the Artemisia would for, to me was, you know, you think you have a plan and then you have to adjust, <laughs> you know, so it's it, the art of easier for me is more this, this quality of, of this, this willful toddler, you know, stomping her feet, but I had a plan. This is what I was going to do. And the plants are like, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> and this is what's actually going to be happening. So either get on board or <laughs> go stomp somewhere else. Uh, that's, that's kind of a fun we just think we have an, we think we know what's happening and then something beautiful will happen. Like this, this plant offers to you, or, you know, you think, oh, this is where I'm going to do it. And it turns out a tire has crushed it or the plants vanished and it's not there anymore. And you're like, it's the end of the world. <laughs> it feels like it. Um, one of the, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah go ahead. You added something to I was going to say, then what was sort of amazing that came out of that? And again, it had to do with this a little bit of earth advocacy that was part of the energy of that of that flower. Um, it got me communicating with finding the group of people who were doing the clearing and um, voicing my concerns about the orchid and that they now have a couple people in the group that know how to identify it and protect it during that work. So, you know, it sort of um, the benefit of that just kind of it propelled me and to, to help protect it, you know, again, it's not just about taking and not even just taking because it feels right. You know, I even feel weird saying that even though I just explained that story. Um, it's part of this bigger picture of tending the land and taking care of the environment. So it's not like this isolated, you know, incident, but, he, you know, here I am then being involved in how to, you know, be a better caretaker for the land as a whole and to protect like this grow this little you know cr outcropping of of orchids from future uh, inadvertent damage that is such an important issue and something that I, I, the the thought that i had just before you said that i think it really ties in perfectly because one of the things that i get constantly reminded when i'm talking to the plants is my my preconceived notions of of, you know, 
like human superiority <laughs> or, or, or even just human, um, this, this view that we're contained and that now I'm in nature and no one can see me. You know, I want to be alone in nature. And I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten this message of like, you know, almost a little bit of a slap upside the head, like, hey, little human, you know, you think you're so superior, but we know how to do this. We are so much, you know, we're, 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 we're your older brothers and sisters, and we know how this works. And just because you can move around on your legs doesn't mean that you understand life, <laughs> you know, doesn't mean that you have the perspective that we have. They have, the plants have such a a long-term perspective. We have this, we, this perspective of being humans. We have a short life. Uh, you know, we, we think it's all contained, you know, birth to death. And, you know, we have this many years to do things and the time scale of plants is completely different, even individual plants. But certainly when you get into to species and families, it's, it's, you know, they're thinking in millennia and we're just like, but this week we have to do it this week. And like, yeah, what's your rush? <laughs> So I like what you're saying about that perspective of just relax into it a little bit and allow nature to help guide you uh, more and more. Yeah, we, we just can't try to control it. That is, that is the message over, over and over and over again. <laughs> we are not in charge. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a partnership. And in, in when you're in partnership, you don't get to do things exactly the way that you would do if you were doing it alone, right? Uh, so you're, you're partnering with the green world, which has a different pace. It has a different, it does it per perspective. It has a different um, just mindset, if you can say such a thing, which I believe you can. Um, and, and, and connecting with that rather than our human um linear you know we we just see the world from our own from behind our own eyes and working deeply with nature allows you to develop a different perspective on the world and see yourself in that continuum in that larger continuum we get to see the patterns and nature is not without a sense of humor as well <laughs> it's usually pretty funny the way that these you know the, these messages from the universe can manifest um you know the a, a really silly just funny synchronicity um you know a lot of them happen and I, I don't tend to even write a lot of them down but one i'll never forget and that is when i was making an essence with poke the poke root plant uh, Phytolachia americana, I think. Um, it, you know, it it was all about kind of poking you to uh, to delve into things that you didn't want to look at <laughs> in your psyche. And um, I came back in from making this essence and found that during that time. I got, you know, if you've been on Facebook for any number of years, you wouldn't, you know, that, that there used to be a feature called poke, you know, and you could poke somebody and I don't know, maybe it's even still there, but nobody uses it anymore. And it's, it just, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just, I don't know, it's like saying hi or something. It never really made sense. Um, I hadn't had anyone do that for years, but as I was making the poke essence, somebody poked me on Facebook. And it wasn't somebody that I wanted to deal with or talk to. <laughs> and that is like the perfect, funny, just little laughable message from the universe about that essence. <laughs> yeah, nature does have a sense of humor. And, it, and sometimes sometimes we're the subject of the sense of humor. <laughs> that's that's really funny. Oh. Well, I, I've really loved sharing I've got, I've, you know, we could do this for two hours. I, I've really loved sharing these stories with you because I know I have many more and, and I'm, I'm, I would hope that some of our, our listeners some people who are sharing this time with us together, maybe you have some stories too, that we would love to hear. We'd love to hear your experiences with plants. Um, so hopefully on the socials, you'll, you'll share your stories with us, or if you don't want to share it publicly, maybe email or, or something like that, um, because it's, weaving this world together of of connecting to plant intelligence and the healing that's 
open and available and they're eager to share this with us. And, and I think that everything that we do to sort of normalize this reality of being surrounded by consciousness and being surrounded by the intelligence in nature uh, is, is a valuable thing to overcome the preset uh, Western world mindset of this is how reality is. So thanks for sharing the, the, um, our, our special um, version of reality and uh, letting us share the stories with you. And we'd love to hear your stories too. So thanks for joining us on this episode of the Flower Essence podcast. And um, until next time, I know, Ro, we, we put out a call to our patrons um, asking for some, some questions because we our goal is to start developing like a new little segment of question and answer and whether we tag them on to the end of episodes or whether we create special episodes or we're still in, in process to see how that's going to go. And we've gotten some good questions so far and I know I want to really dive into some of those questions. So it's a little sneak peek at what's coming up. Did you want to add something onto that as well? Yeah, well, first, I would also love to hear everybody's essence making stories. I mean, this could be a great conversation, a fun share about synchronicities and things that happen. And like, who else can you really talk to about these things other than other flower essence practitioners and makers? Um, so it's really, it's really special to have these conversations. Um, and for the for the patrons, you know, we yeah, tell us what you would like to see from us. Um, we have a good list of questions, as Kathleen said, and we'll be um, recording some answers to those questions and making them available to our patrons on Patreon. And if you have not yet subscribed uh, to that community, please do so and help support the Flower Essence podcast. Thank you so much. And we just as another note, we we are here to help you in ways that, that in, in all various and sundry ways, both of us are, uh, our books do have space for new clients. We are happy to talk to you about what flower essence therapy can do for you um, and different possibilities. So get in touch if you have questions or if you're interested in working with us, we would love to talk to you and love to share the healing qualities and the just the healing in nature that we've both experienced so deeply and we can share it in our stories. We can share our experiences with nature and recognize that nature is here for you too. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye.